Well, hello, fishing friends, and if you're new here, welcome. So this is my second video of the Epic Freshwater series on the US West DLC. And today's video, we're going to catch all the epics from locations six through 10. So I have a few of them up in the tank there. You can take a look at them, see if you can spot them. All right, well, let's get started. Let's head to location number six. Okay, here we are on location six. Probably one of my favorite locations on the US West DLC. The, this place is just beautiful. So this is an awesome place. Uh, what we're gonna catch here is the golden rainbow trout. Um, its depth is on the bottom and for live bait, we have krill and for lure, a crankbait. I'm actually going to use a crankbait on this one. Uh, I find it's a little bit easier than the krill. I mean, you could use the krill. There's not very many fish that will take the krill. I think the uh, brook trout will grab the krill. And maybe a couple of other ones. Actually, I think the brook trout is the only one. Um, but crankbait, there's only like three of them that'll take the crankbait as well, so. Uh, and you will get a chance to catch the Apache trout on the crankbait. So that's a bonus. Um, you might catch some white crappie, um, white sucker, and brook trout. Uh, but it'll be easy to catch the golden rainbow trout. So let's get started. All right. So I'm going to do is I'm going to cast out. And I'm going to reel in and count to six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And when it's on the bottom like that, and I just kind of tap my trigger because I'm doing one handed. But if you're reeling, you just reel in a little bit at a time just to kind of bounce it along the bottom of the water there. And then once you get it to where you can actually see it, yeah, you're going to be close enough to where you can just quick retrieve it in by pulling your thumbstick back. And go over a few feet. And one, two, three, four, five, six. And do it again. And basically, you're gonna do this all the way across. Until you catch it. And it shouldn't take you too long. Um, I usually catch one about every five minutes or so on this level. You know, five to 10 minutes, you should, you should catch one pretty easily. By using this method just going along the bottom all right so i'm going to continue doing that and i'll bring you back when i hook one on my line Another red line. Hmm, that might have been a good splash. Wasn't small. It wasn't running. So that might be it. Because it's a medium sized fish, so you'll just get a slight splash and then it'll run. Back and forth on the way in. Oh, yep, there he is. And we caught him. And there we go, the golden rainbow trout. All right, we'll keep him. And we'll go ahead and head to location seven. Okay, here we are on location seven. Another breathtaking view. I, I think it'd be awesome to just float down the river. That would be so cool. Um, I might have to try that sometime. I might have to find this location and go on a 
bit of a float trip here. So, all right. So on this one, we're going after the Arctic Grayling. Uh, it is a bottom swimming fish and live bait is a grasshopper, lures a spinner and soft bait. Um, now there are seven other fish on here that like the grasshopper. Uh, however, there are six other fish that like the spinner and the soft bait. Um, I'm a big fan of using the spinner. So I'm going to go ahead and use the spinner on this location. Uh, but you could use the soft bait and pretty much do the same thing. So I already have my spinner on there. Uh, one of the things I like to do is I like to target, since it's a bottom swimming fish, we have some bubbles out there. And I'm going to target those locations first. Matter of fact, there's two of them right here. I'm going to go right down the middle of them. As long as you're in their path, I'm going to let it hit the bottom. Okay, I felt it hit the bottom, and I'm going to reel in really slow. And that'll keep it along the bottom of the water. There we go, it's already red. And it's taken off on me. So there's a couple of ways to keep it on the bottom. You can either reel in really slow or you can reel in and count to three. And I'll show you that next after I bring this guy in. So we know there was at least two of them out there. So I'm gonna go ahead and cast back in that same spot because there were uh, two sets of bubbles. That's the Chinook salmon, I think, maybe? Still learning these US West DLC fish. Oh no, that's a bass. It's a striped bass. All right. I'm gonna go back out there. I'm gonna go past them. Let it sink. It's usually about a 10 to 12 count. You can actually feel it when it hits the bottom. Right there, it just hit the bottom. Once it hits the bottom, once you start reeling, it's going to pick it up off the bottom. If you reel too fast, um, it will actually come to the top. So you can do one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and that's one way to do it. Or if you reel it really slow, um, you can also keep it along the bottom as well. So either way works. Some of the lures, if you reel, they'll come right to the top pretty quickly so on those you do the one two three method uh, and keep them down to the bottom uh, spinners pretty easy to keep on the bottom though you just reel it in really really slow there was the salmon All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and bring this salmon in. And then I'll go ahead and start from the left, work my way to the right. Just like I've done on all the other locations. Let's get this guy in here. Oh no, it's a brown trout. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start over here. I'm gonna cast out. And then if I don't get anything, I'm gonna go over here, cast out, don't get anything. You know the deal. I'm just going to work my way all the way around until, oh, actually, there's some bubbles. I'm going to go after those bubbles first. Let it hit the bottom. And reel it in slow. Do the one, two, three method. See if we catch anything off those bowls. And like I said, as long as you're in its path, so you know I can just kind of jig it around there a little bit. As long as you're in the path, those bubbles will come back. So you don't need to be right on top of them as long as you're close to them and in the path that it's been swimming back and forth. You'll catch it.
All right, white sucker. All right, well, I'll bring you back as soon as I get one on the line. bubbles and see if there's anything there. Yeah, buddy. There were some stuff at those bubbles. There was something at those bubbles. Let's see what we got. Nice small splash. Tired them out pretty quickly. And there we go, the Arctic Grayling. I'm glad I jumped over and <laughs> went after those bubbles. So there you go. So I actually, this is a good point. I've actually fished this whole area and it was in, it ended up being right in front of me. Now, the reason that that happened was as I fished this area, I was catching fish and you always have 15 fish in the water. So when you catch a fish, it's replaced with another fish. So um, you might catch a fish and, you know, you might go all the way through here and not catch it. And you've caught in your fish over here. Well, then it replaces it with another fish right there. Um, so you don't always have to reset your fish to, to catch these epics. If you want to just keep catching fish over and over and over, it'll eventually show up because they replace the fish that you catch with another fish. So that's a good, uh, good thing to remember. So yep, got our personal best even. Cool. Let's let this guy go. Oh, actually, now I'm going to keep him. I'm still trying to get my money back from buying all the gloves. <laughs> all right. And we'll go to location number eight. Okay, here we are on location number eight. Another beautiful place. Look at that. Man. If you don't have the DLC... Highly recommend getting this. This is just amazing. All right. So on here, we're going to be catching the American eel. It's on all depths. So because it's on all depths, we're going to fish in the middle. Uh, that way they can swim up and swim down. And if you remember on one of my previous videos, what we do is we fish the depth in the middle. We'll count to five and then we'll retrieve it back in. Okay. Um, it doesn't like any lures. Live baits is grasshopper and crawfish. Uh, that's a no-brainer. We're going to use crawfish. Uh, a lot of stuff uses the grasshopper, crawfish. Uh, we're only going to be dealing with the tench. Nothing else likes the crawfish. So that's why we're going to stick with the crawfish. All right, let's get started. And all I'm going to do is cast out. When the bobber comes up, one, two, three, four, five. If I don't catch anything, I'm going to quick retrieve it by pulling my thumbstick back. Go a little closer. Might be a little too close, but we'll count it out. One, two, three, four, five. And always wait for your bobber to come up before you start counting. One, two, three, four, five. And we'll just continue to do that all the way across. And actually on this lake, it probably would be best to start over here because the drift is this direction. So we're going to let our line drift a little bit and then we kind of cast at the end of the drift. So one, two, three, four, five. Quick retrieve. One, two, three, four. Oh, there we go. That was a quick bite on a two count. So it's either going to be a tench or our eel. One of the two.
Looks like it's the tench. Yep. All right. Well, we'll keep going. And I'm going to continue to do that. And once I get one on the line, I'll bring you back. Oh, there we go. Got a quick red line. Way out there. Come on. Just playing around with it. Bite it. <laughs> Ooh, that was a small splash, too. Oh, my God. It. We might have it right there. Yep, I think I see it. Sure enough, there he is. That's a big one. The American Eel. And it's my personal best. <laughs> All right. Well, that one was quick and easy. Well, let's head to location number nine. All right. Here we are on location number nine. Get to hang out on my boat. <laughs> All right. So on here. This is a good one. We're going to go after the kokanee salmon. Uh, he's a pretty big fish. He swims on the bottom and only likes the spoon. So I guess that's what we're going to use as a spoon. Um, the pumpkin seed sunfish and the brook trout are the only two other fish that like the spoon. So um, eh, we might catch a few sunfish. And yeah, brook trout's a pretty common one too. Uh, but it should be pretty easy to catch this guy. And so I'm going to go ahead and turn my bait on so I can show you something real quick um, on how we're going to be bringing our line in. So we're going to cast out as far as we can. We're going to let it sink till it hits the bottom. And on this one, this is one of those lures when you start reeling in, it comes up really fast. Okay. So you want to make sure and do small bursts and then kind of tug it. Okay, you're going to jig it in just so you can keep it on the bottom. Oh, there we go. We got a red line already. And he's taken off. We Look at that. We probably caught him already because he is a large fish and he will take off. And the other two are small fish and won't. So this might be a very quick one right here. Catching it on that very first cast. We'll know as soon as he jumps out of the water. There he is. Yep, how about that? So, um, that's how you do it. You just jig, you just jig the spoon across the bottom of the water. And if you want, you can turn your bait on so you can kind of see where it's at down there. And then once you get used to it, you can turn the bait back off so that you don't have to see it down on the bottom but yeah he's a pretty cool looking fish I like this one and there we go look at him man how would you like to run into that guy sockeye salmon all right keep him almost got all my money back once I hit 300,000 I have nothing left to buy so <laughs> I'll just I'll start releasing the fish after that. All right. Let's go to the last location for this video, location number 10. All right, well, here we are on location number 10. And on this location, we are going to be fishing for the tiger muscalunge. I don't know how to say that, um, but his depth is in the middle. And we are actually going to use a crankbait on this one. 
Um, there's only a couple that will go after the crankbait, two or three on this map. So, and there's quite a few that'll do the spinner. So that's why I'm going to go with the crankbait. I like the crankbait anyway. So let me close that up. I already got my crankbait on there. And okay, I got my baits turned on. I'm going to show you how to do the crankbait. So you're going to bring it out there. The crankbait doesn't actually go down under the water until you start to reel it in. So you're going to reel it in and you're going to count to about two and that will get it to the middle um, between two and three. That's usually the middle. So you go one, two, and then just kind of tap your trigger to keep it on that depth right there. And that'll keep it towards the middle where our fish is going to be swimming around. So just remember to count two, three. Yeah, I usually do about two because um, it goes down really quick. Okay, and then when we bring it in, I'm gonna go ahead and shut my baits off. And we just go over to the right a little bit and do that again. One, two, and then just kind of tap the trigger. One, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And I'll just keep it right there in the middle. Oh, we already got a red line. Let's see what we got. And he's taken off. That's a good sign. I like the little sailboat going over there the birds flying around the game is so peaceful got your cars driving up there I don't think that was it I didn't get a good good view of it I was too busy looking at the cars <laughs> Not paying attention. No. Chinook salmon. All right. Well, you know the drill. I'm going to keep casting out and I'm going to keep my working my way across and I'll bring you back as soon as I get one on the line. Oh, oh, I had a red line there for a second. Let me go back out there and bring it back through. Might have been red towards the top. Might have been like a small mouth. Oh, it's taken off. So it's not a small mouth. It's swimming pretty fast. It's a walleye. Walleye. Oh, nope. There we got him. There he is. I guess when he swims really fast, that's a good sign. I think the walleye swims fairly fast as well, though. But I think this one is swimming a lot faster. bring this guy in and I've reset um, this was my third reset and I don't think I've showed you how to reset 
on this go around. If you've watched my other mat, uh, videos, you've seen how to reset, but uh, I'll show you how to reset here in a second once I get this guy in. I'll show you what I'm talking about by resetting my fish. I don't think I've showed you on this video yet. And there he is. Tiger Muscalenge. <laughs> Looks like a mean fish. Keep him. I'm almost there. Alright, so when I'm saying reset, what I'm doing is I'm going into my settings. I'm switching from hard to expert. And what that does is it resets your fish. It takes the 15 fish that you had out there and gives you 15 new fish. So once I've fished all the way across, um, I'll go ahead and reset. Now, like I said before, when you catch a fish, it's replaced with another fish because you always have 15 fish out there. So you don't have to reset. If you're catching a lot of fish, you can just go across here and then come back over here, start and do, you know, go back across. Um, but I always refresh to get you a nice start of 15, 15 more fish. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and end the, the uh, video here. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing as I did on my previous video. I'm going to have all the fish that I caught scroll up through here. Um, and how long it took me to catch the epic on each location. And I do thank you for watching. Again, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And please hit that like button on this video if this helped you catch these epics. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.